example, we'll build a simple static file server in Go. The first thing we need to do with the uh, Go tools is to set our Go path. So we're going to export the present working directory as our Go path where we have our source files. And what we've done is created a simple project that contains a directory called static, which will serve a static HTML file, and our source code file for the server. Uh, because this is an executable program, it belongs in the package main. And into this, we'll import uh, the net HTTP package so that we can serve content. Then we're going to have a main function. Um, and in this main function, we're going to use the server mux, which is a simple HTTP router. And we're going to serve everything uh, using the uh, file server, the static file server, and a directory of static. This will serve all the assets from that static directory, every request. Um, and then we'll tell Go to listen and serve on port 3000 for any requests um, that that handler can, that, that, that MUX can service. So if we run our program now, we'll be able to go to port 3000 and see our output. All right. And there's our static Hello World page. All right, let's stop it with Control C. There's a problem. What if we want to change the port we're listening on? Well, in order to pass and uh, command line arguments to go, we're going to use the flag package, and we're going to set up three environment variables. The first one is the um, directory from which we're going to serve our static assets. We'll call that static directory, and it'll be a string. Uh, the next one will be uh, the server host name that we'll use for our default host name, and the server port, which will be an integer. Oops, it should be flag, not flags. All right. So now we're going to go in and read these from the command line. So using the flag package, we're going to tell uh, the flag package there's a server variable, and it's going to be put into the address of static directory, and it's going to be dir as its name. The default value will be the current slash static, and we'll use a human readable title, and we'll do this for the other three. So one will also be a string variable. We pass it the address of the target variable, which we'll put in where, where, where the uh, information will be placed. And uh, by default, we're going to listen to every address on this machine, or 0000. zero, zero, zero. Whoops, OK. So let's make that call, called host. And the default will be all addresses. And a nice human readable name. And finally, our port which in this case will be an integer variable. And it will be the past the address of server port. And its name is port. Just a second, port. And the default value will be 3000. And we'll give it a nice human readable name. OK. So what this will do is give us Three, three, value, three default sets of values for these variables. All right, then by calling flag parse, uh, Go will take care of parsing the command line parameters and setting them up. If we use dash help, we'll see that Go provides us uh, the information about our command line arguments. All right, now we're going to use our command line arguments by replacing the uh, magic string for static to be the um, static directory variable. And we'll use the fumped package, or the format package, but it's pronounced fumped, to create a, uh, a string for the hostname colon port that will, be, that will service the request. Remember, if you pass in a, a hostname, only that host uh, address will be used to listen to requests, like 127.0.0.1, if you just want to listen on the local host. In this case, we're using 0.0.0.0 as default, which are all interfaces on a host. So now if we run this, and set the port to 5555, we'll be able to go to port 5555 and see that we're serving our content. And if we go back to port 3000, we will see that we're no longer serving on that port. And so here we have the uh, 
three packages that we required, the variables that store our configuration, the reading of the environment or command line, and then a simple server. 